Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, <laughs> it's really hot this weekend here in the UK, um, here in the, my part of the UK at least. We're due to be 28, 28 or 29 degrees later today. It's quite early at the moment, so I've come up here to do a quick show and tell, show you what I'm going to be getting on with. I need to find stuff I can't, it's just too hot to work up here and especially film anything because uh, with the lights as well, it just gets... So um, I'm going to take some things either downstairs in the coolest part of the house or a bit later this evening I can be working outside. There's a few different things I like to do. I like to take a bit of slow stitching outside. Another thing I love to do is basket making and I've tried all kinds of basket making over the years. I, there's something really satisfying to me about making a basket in it. Always, Whichever way I've done it, it just always feels very, I don't know, natural. I've sometimes wondered because when I was doing my um, family history research I, I found some of my family that came from Ireland were basket makers so yeah I do maybe it's in the maybe it's in the jeans <laughs> anyway so I thought I would show you quickly some of the baskets I've made in the past um, I tend to as you'll probably know if you're a regular viewer I discover a new technique and get a bit obsessed with it for a while <laughs> you'll see what I mean in a minute and I thought oh, what I, I will do is I'm not going to show you how to make them because I followed some excellent tutorials myself which will explain it far better than I can. So if you fancy having a go at any of these, I'll put all the links. I'll, I'll show you them quickly now and I'll put the links in the description box so you can have a go. And of course, being me, um, if I can make something out of uh, recycled rubbish or found items, so much the better. So that's what these are all about. So which one shall I show you first? Let's go for, let's go for these first. So I started making newspaper baskets. Let me just show you this first. This is, now I don't keep my blog anymore really. I kind of wish I made time, I, I would make time to do it because it's such a lovely visual record for yourself, even if nobody else ever looks at it. But I haven't got time to do everything I'd like to do. And I just, I prefer the interaction I get on here and on, on, the, in the Discord community and on the Facebook page and Instagram, you know, um, I found with blogging, I just didn't get that much interaction. And uh, so, but I, I wish I could make time to keep it for a visual record because quickly looking back at this a minute ago, just to find these references to show you, I just thought, oh, it is nice to look back at what I was doing a few years ago. So anyway, let me show you. So here's my blog, Artifarty Annie. This is how I've got it laid out at the moment. I'm not sure if I like this layout, but there we go. <laughs> So this was when I got into making baskets with old newspapers. And I'm talking about one of my current obsessions. So this is May the 30th, but I don't know what year this was. 2018, maybe? It's going back away. And I made all of these baskets out of old newspapers. Um, got really obsessed with them. And they were all made, yeah, I, I, I used a little bit of glue. Other than that, it was all made entirely out of newspapers and some old brown bags as well. Um, you can see another basket there. That's my buttock basket. <laughs> that was a proper, like proper willow weaving. I went to a class for that one. And this is this is the the place where we used to live. The cottage. I still miss it. I loved living there. I I really enjoyed sitting outside making baskets. And I I started this one off at a class and then sat outside in the sunshine when I got home and finished it off. I was so proud of it. <laughs> I said that you can see in this one. Why well, my my hubby said it reminded him of the knickers we used to put over babies' nappies. <laughs> they literally are called buttock. It's called the buttock pattern or buttock buttock baskets <laughs> for obvious reasons. I didn't get the buttock curve quite so well in my but it was my first ever proper willow basket so uh, I was very proud of that. So I got really obsessed with making um, the newspaper baskets. Um, here's a few of them I'm going to show you and these aren't all the ones we've got in the house. We've got we've got them all over the house they tend to be in those places where you collect bits and bobs you know. Um, I tried to throw a few out at one point and then my husband couldn't couldn't bear it and rescued them from the recycling. <laughs> And considering I made these years ago and I never put, I never got meant to paint them or varnish them or something, never got around to it. So, I mean, they're very sturdy. I think I'll go to the desk and show you a bit better. So one of the things I love about them, this is the best example of it, is I didn't use any colouring, any paint, anything um, other than PVA glue. And you don't use a lot of that. It's just at the very ends to glue the ends down. Most of it is just holding itself together. This was made entirely out of newspaper. It wasn't magazines, it was newspapers. 
but they do have some kind of coloured coloured adverts here and there. And when I was rolling the strips to start them off, I would divide them up into colours. And I made this one with these all these rainbow colours, literally out of colours that were there in the papers. I was so pleased with that one. I love it. I love it. If I say so myself, I was just so pleased. It was such a satisfying thing to do. It feels like you're you're doing something that, well, you are, you're doing something that people have been doing for centuries. You can see now, over time, this has started to just come adrift a little bit in places. I just tuck that back in. I could put a bit of glue on it if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's one. Another thing I quite enjoyed doing was using brown paper kind of shopping bags that we, the veggies used to come in um, to make the rolls for these uprights to give that effect of the, and on the bottom there, I actually, <laughs> I used the box as the base there. There's so many different ways of doing it. This one used grocery bags again. So there's a grocery bag as the base and there's as the uprights. Now you can see there, the newspaper on this one is going quite, is yellowing quite a lot. Oh, it doesn't show it so well on the camera, but it is really going quite yellow. So I think maybe with this one, it's time to actually try doing the thing I meant to do, which was to, to paint, to use white paint or whatever. But you know, you can, um, if you get one like, let's put these out of the way. So like this one, for instance, I love the shape this one came out and I love the colors that are in there. So I, I just I just like to, to leave, it, leave it like that. But if, if you made one that kind of a shape and you can smooth over it with, um, you, you put like a layer of paint or whatever first, and then you can decoupage over it with napkins or whatever and give it a much sort of smoother finish and, and some patterns. It's all sorts of things. In a second, I'll show you a couple of the YouTube uh, tutorials that I looked at to, to do this. This one's plainer. I still quite like it. I think this is one of the really early ones. I, I still I love it. I, I just love all the different effects you can get. This one was a different shape. I've <laughs> just been collecting polystyrene balls in here for some reason. I tried a few different kind of weaves. Um, you can see. The bit I struggled with the most was getting this top bit tidy but I got better at that as I went along. This is a different kind of weave on the bottom. I just did this kind of all over weave on the bottom. That's the starting point with that one. Oops. <laughs> a bit of stripe through. This is just all newspapers that are getting thrown out. I was I was grabbing the ones off the bus that people left on the bus and things because we don't actually have a da like a daily newspaper or anything. And then in this one I've got what I did with I thought I'll try a, a little project with some of the leftovers to use up the last few that I had left and I made these little hearts and sort of put some beads that I had here and there quite a nice way of using up the beads and some scraps of ribbon and stuff and I thought they, they would probably look nice hanging up outside you know for summer parties and things that's probably one of my favorites and you could make them really durable if you put some varnish or something on them or you could spray you could just use a, a white spray paint or something and make them completely completely white. A useful pot to put things in. <laughs> so we've got more of them. I must have ended up with about 30 of them. I, I, I did use a couple of them for as, as like a gift box thing to put. I must remember actually because I could use a few more of those up. They look quite pretty as a gift thing. You could put a few bits and bobs in for a friend, you know, make a nice little, uh, you know, instead of, instead of using gift wrap or gift bag or something. So these are the kind of tutorials that I've followed. There's some really good ones. I found that I was watching a lot of them were in Russian or Polish or whatever and I, and, um, I was having to use follow subtitles and stuff but mostly visually you can see what they're doing. Well, this person is using white newsprint, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to buy paper specially to do this. Um, I much prefer the idea of using paper that's going to be thrown away. But yeah, the tutorials are so good I'm not even going to, you know, there's no point in me trying to do a tutorial and not do a great job of it you'll find some brilliant ones here just put in like I've put their basket newspaper weaving I don't think there's any point in me linking to any particular one so that's what I used to do where you can see this one here they've rolled all of their tubes I just got really obsessed with it I roll I would spend hours in the evening watching something on my laptop sitting at the dining table rolling tubes and dividing them into colors and it was so satisfying it really was to end up with these bundles and bundles of um, of tubes and then before you use them you just spritz them with water to soften them up a little bit before you start yeah so there's some I would say I'm not going to worry about um, leaving a, a link I think just put in basket newspaper weaving or something like that and um, 
you'll get all sorts come up. So the next kind of basket I'm going to show you is using these. Now I am a bit of a copy of it. I have loads of these. I have a Tassimo machine. You can get the pods recycled if you've got a TerraCycle collection point near you. And I believe uh, TerraCycle will take these as well, but I've been saving them to do coffee bag basket making with. Now let's go straight back to here so I can show you a bit of an idea of, of what we're talking about. Let's go in. There you go, so that's that's the name. I have no idea how you pronounce that. Ruto Puno, no. <laughs> but um, she does amazing things with these coffee bags, recycling these coffee bags and gives very detailed instructions. It's mostly you've got to read the subtitles and, and watch along. Um, and then she makes these little templates to make things a bit easier. Show you how to work out the sizes and everything. So uh, yeah, so I've been saying these, but you know, you can see she's got some really pretty looking designs and different colours and stuff. Mine are all kind of all look very similar. I did start a while back, got a certain way along and then realised I hadn't got anything like enough bags. So I've been, I, I, this, I'll, let me show you how far I got. So this is what I did so far. I turned, they're all turned inside out now. And you can, I hope you can hear, it kind of goes soft and lovely, very, it just makes you want to touch it. Um, it's like a big giant crown, doesn't it? Um, but she shows you how to how these will all go together to create to create um, bags and baskets and all sorts of things. But you know, I used up all the ones I'd got, and this is all I ended up with. So I thought, all right, okay, I'm going to have to take this apart, start again, collect a few more more bags. So I'm going to sit and do some of this later on. Um, I will take them downstairs, like I say, in a cool, shady bit of the house, <laughs> and maybe outside later when it cools off a bit. I've I've made my this is my little template that I used to cut my to cut my strips with. So you, you kind of cut them here first to open them out, and then you think we did it like this so that you could just follow along. So you could just cut the strips really quickly and keep just like that. Um, and then you fold all the strips. So it's, it's nice, you, you cut all the bags, you cut all the strips, you fold, you turn them all inside out, you fold all the strips, and then you start with. So I just love the whole process. I find it very therapeutic. So yeah, I will probably take this apart and start again, because there's no glue involved or anything. It's all just interlocking. It's fantastic. I love that about it. Um, so yeah, I will come back and show you how I got on with that. But um, like I say, again, no point in me doing a tutorial when there are some just excellent ones already out there. So I will leave a link to her for sure. And then I've got one last kind of basket that I've made. I'm very proud of these. <laughs> if I do say so myself. These have become that kind of receptacle for foreign coins for some reason. Let's just get rid of those in a minute. So this is a little set, a little nesting set of baskets that I made. Oh. This is what I wanted to find. This is what I made these baskets with. So this is a little, these, I think this was my very first one. I was so pleased with the shape, how the shape came out and everything. They're a bit prick, prickly, ouch. <laughs> they're a bit prickly. So they're not as tactile as you think they might be because they are a bit prickly. But I just think they're just, it's such a, a beautiful thing to look at. Very natural, very simple. And they're all made out of, um, pine needles picked up off the ground at the local park where my husband volunteers once a week he, he does a lot of really hard work in all weathers helping to maintain the park um and i even managed to make a lid that kind of fits people do incredible things with these baskets and it's a very ancient method of basket making Again, you can make it more fancy. You could weave lavender into this um, or h herbs or whatever, you know, hard, harder, the harder herbs. You could um, add colour by dyeing. Um, you can add colour with stitching as well. But I just liked the look of them just like this. So here's... Now, I did these last year and they still seem to be all right. So this was after I washed them, spread them out to dry, picked through and picked out all the sort of extraneous debris does it smell yeah it still just smells vaguely piney and um, so i could make another basket with this i did find find it made my hands quite sore because it is quite prickly so i'd say if you wanted to have a go at this i'd advocate perhaps wearing gloves if you can bear it but i'm not one for gloves so i just put up with the sore fingers a bit but but i was just so so happy with what uh, with what came out of that and i've got plenty there to make another whole set of baskets and you know the basic method is just um gathering them into bundles and stitching them 
together and coiling them round. Because these have been kept, these are very dry now because they've been kept for a year, I would have to re-soak these before I used them to make them more flexible again. And I used, you know those bits of tube you get on top of paintbrushes like, hang on, like that one. I used one of those to, as, as the kind of gauge for my bundle to keep the bundle kind of roughly the same thickness all the way around and, and then you just add more and more in as you go along as the bundle starts to get thin. It makes sense when you get into it, I promise. <laughs> so if you if you do fancy having a go at that, here's um, here's a good tutorial. So I will leave a link to her as well. Wild she goes. There's lots of others as well, you can see. Um, and look at this, some of this fancy stitching that they do. It's, um, it's as I say, a very ancient craft and um, glycerin treated pine needles. I never did that. Mm. And you can buy, you don't have to go do all that make all these yourself you can buy um, pine needles for basket making they're not desperately expensive it was much more satisfying to find them myself I found but you definitely if you want to have a go and you don't want to do all that you can you can buy them online look at some of these beautiful things look at this see they've used these you saw a brief glimpse of that there we go of the sort of um, gauge thing you use for keeping the bundles uniform that's where I just used that plastic paintbrush tube thing. Some of these I haven't seen before. These are new to me. And there's someone during the process. Yeah, that's pretty much what, <laughs> what mine looked like as I was working on it. I think there are lots of different cultures that have versions of this basket and there are lots of different um, ways to sort of make it more decorative or, or whatever. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll put this one as a starting point, but if you just put in pine needle basket making, You'll, cut, you'll find all sorts of things. Very last thing is to show you my buttocks. <laughs> so here's my buttock basket. It's um, it's getting on a bit now, um, but it's still really sturdy. You can see it's a bit thin at the bottom and that's because I ran out of willow. It didn't go, I, I think the lady thought she'd given me plenty to bring home and I kind of didn't, I maybe didn't use as much of the willow ones as I should have. I sort of tended to use the thinner bits because it was easier and uh, so I kind of ran a bit thin at the bottom there. But having said that, I still love the shape of it. I love the look of it. It sits in our conservatory and I use it as a as a trug in the garden to um, for gathering up when I'm cutting herbs or deadheading or whatever I might be doing and I just need something by me in the garden. Oh, I might just use it to take my bits and pieces that I'm going to be working with later. So that's uh, so that's all my different kinds of baskets. I just thought I'd show you that today because it's, as I say, it's just too hot to be... Um, working and filming much up here but I thought I'd just still show you a little glimpse of uh, what I'll be getting up to and maybe give you some ideas that you might like to have a go at yourself. As you can see whenever I do something I do it, I get obsessed with it and do it to extremes and then I leave it for a while and then sometimes I rediscover it and think oh I enjoyed doing that I'll have another go. I hope you're having a, a lovely weekend wherever you are. I hope you hope you don't get too hot it's funny to think that some of the people in our in our little community now going into winter like the people in New Zealand and Australia are now going into winter and for us we're like hitting this massive heat wave it's just yeah anyway enough of my waffle um thank you very much for joining me today enjoy your weekends wherever you are and whatever you're doing and I will see you again really soon